Miss Lydia Wardlaw, you remember how it was composed? Uh, during the 1880s, Mary Chestnut set back to write what she remembered from the diaries that she had burned in the 1860s. So this is not this is not an actual diary no, of, of her wartime experience. Because no, it wasn't composed until decades later. It's it's two it's two decades later that she goes back to a wartime journal, a series of wartime journals that she kept, but are very kind of skeletal in, in what they record. And she goes back and she starts reworking these entries, creating, in a sense. So it's both a reconstruction, it's a reconstruction of her wartime journals, some of which were burned, as you mentioned, but it's a, into something else. She is not trying to create something that is true to daily experience or daily life in the Confederacy. It's very much a literary creation, as Stern describes it. And it has a literary ambition. It's not meant to be a simple recording of this is what happened on this day as I experienced it. It's meant to do something else. It is meant eventually to be published. It is not published in her lifetime, as we know. She dies before that happens, but published by her literary first, published by her literary executor in 1905 as a diary from Dixie. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to work with our excerpt, probably the most famous chapter in this diary, uh, to see if we can tease out some of these, some of the diary's themes, but also see if we can tease out the questions that we're, we're probing today, the question we're investigating today, which is the relationship of this diary with the aftermath of the war.